and we have some wonderful brown folk with, well, uh, <laughs> that's uh, I, this is my second time here at uh, Brown University, and the first time I was here was also very educational. Uh, you might uh, be aware that uh, Mike and I, uh, oh, he's not sitting there. Uh, M Mike Black and I uh, were in the comedy group The State together. And the state all met at NYU. We were all theater kids, drama kids, film kids, and we met there and formed a group, and uh, we became fast friends. And in our sophomore year, one member of the group, Michael Showalter, decided he wanted to leave NYU and come to Brown because, as he put it, I want to get an education. So he came here, and he was constantly calling us to keep in touch with us. And he was always saying, you guys got to come. You got to come up here. You got to come up. So one weekend, we were like, about five or six of us were like, OK, we're going to come. We're going to come. We're going to get in the car, drive up there, and hang out. He's like, great. You can put sleeping bags on my dorm room floor, and I'll be your tour guide. It'll be a real adventure. So fantastic. We take the three-hour car ride, and Joe Latrulio, another member of the state, pulls out a uh, brown baggie filled with mushrooms. <laughs> and we were all very psyched because none of us had ever done mushrooms before. We were like, oh, now this is really, really going to be an adventure of a trip. We were like, look, there's maybe only enough for five, so we won't give any to show Walter. We'll just make him our guide because we need a sane person there a sober person, so that was the plan. Now, I was a little bit worried because I was still in the closet. I hadn't come out to everyone in the group, and I just have always had this kind of Jekyll and Hyde thing where I can be a little shy when you first meet me. I, 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 I just am afraid that there's too much freak that might come out too quickly. So when the brown bag of mushrooms came out, I thought, oh, no. What might I do once I ingest these things? What might I reveal to my friends this weekend? Well, we got here, and we parked right outside the dorm, and we were like, remember, we don't want to share these with Showalter. So we'll take them now, and we head into to his dorm room, and he says, oh my gosh, oh guys, yes, you were coming this weekend. You guys were going to come and visit me this weekend. He's like, I am on my way to NYU to visit a friend. So he's literally walking out his dorm room as we're coming in. He's going to New York, taking the exact same car ride we just took the other way. And we are about to start tripping on mushrooms. We don't know anyone here. We don't know this campus or anything. So he goes off. And we kind of sat around in the dorm room a little while, and we were like, well, we can't do this. We've got to go out into the sunshine, into the sunshine, sunshine time. We go outside, and we notice a church, and there's this soothing organ music happening inside. And we said, oh, well, that'd be nice. That'd be a nice way to drift into the trip if we just went in. Maybe we can even pray that it all turns out OK today. So we go in there. And we're just kind of sitting in the pews, kind of waiting for the tripping to begin. And then Mike, Mike Jan, another member of the state, notices that a priest has just walked into one of those little doors over there. And there's a sign that says, confessions heard three to four. And Mike's like, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to have a conversation with that guy. And the rest of us are starting to feel a little bit buzzy. And we're like, what the fuck? Are you crazy? Don't go, don't go confess your sins right now. And off he went. He goes into the confessional. And we're sitting there waiting. And it's not so soothing anymore, the organ music. We're starting to see the pews breathing. And we're wondering, <laughs> what the fuck kind of conversation he's having in that little confessional? We're waiting and we're waiting and we're like, are we gonna, are, do we have to rescue him? Are we going to have to like pull him out of there and get him out of here? Finally, he comes out and we're like, what, what happened? And he was like, oh, it was very interesting. We said, well, what did you talk to the priest about? He said, the Mets. <laughs> 
He said, we both agreed they were off to a pretty sloppy start this season. And as the conversation went on, he seemed to get just more and more concerned about me and what was going on with me. And I finally decided I had to get out of there. So we all get out of the church, and now it's definitely hitting. It is definitely hitting, hitting big time, and it's laughy time. It's just laughy, laughy, laughy. We just spend, we're just rolling around in the streets. We don't know where we are. All we know is that there's snot coming out of our nose, and that there's spit coming out of our mouths, and there's tears running, and we realize we are moist. We are moist. We, re we start talking about, you know what, we're very moist. And... <laughs> The word moist, we just started loving it. We were saying moist, we were like, I'm moist, for about an hour and a half. And it's true, you know, we're about 75% water, so we are very moist. Well, the next thing that happens is that we pass by a hockey uh, rink or stadium, which I guess you have on campus, and it sounded very exciting in there. It sounded like, rah, like a big, big, exciting time was happening in there. So we were like, hockey stadium, let's go in, let's go in. Now, it, things are definitely shimmering and the feelings are all over the place now. And there's a thing about hockey fans. They express themselves in a certain way to the opposing team from their seats, uh, kind of like this. I'll fucking kill you, you faggot! I will rip your fucking neck off and, and screw you down your throat! So, that's happening. We're just kind of walking around in the aisles of the hockey stadium, and it is only a few seconds before we are batshit terrified. We are terrified for our lives, for humanity in general. We are just very, very disturbed, and we have to get out of there. Now the, the tears are not of laughter, we're very nearly crying from just being disturbed with hockey fandom. So we run out of there and we decide, you know what? Now what we need to do is just kind of huddle under covers maybe and protect ourselves for a little while. So we started asking people on the street how to get back to Showalter's dorm. But these conversations we would have, we weren't sure if we were speaking English, if they were speaking English back, and it was just all the more disturbing. Finally, we, we do make our way back to the, uh, to the uh, dorm room, and we did really kind of huddle in, in the corner, you know, in our little sleeping bags for a while, until everyone just kind of like passed out. Now the next morning, we were all rather surprised to wake up with this feeling, this feeling of kind of like a bond between us, you know, that, that we had just gotten a lot closer the day before. And the only thing I could explain it from was the fact that we had been through so many highs and lows. You know, we had been through euphoric moments, moments of really connecting through laughing, moments of connecting through holding each other in terror. And we just really felt some fellowship, some brotherhood that day. And we took the car ride home, and I decided this is the right time. I'm going to come out of the closet. Because during my time on Mushrooms, all my Jekyll and Hyde, all my Mr. Hyde-isms, you know, they were coming out in little bits and pieces during the trip, but everything was totally accepted. Everything was okay. You know, because when you're gay and you're, you know, in your late teens, early 20s, you are constantly assessing the people in your lives, the, the vibe they give off, the extent to which they'll accept it or not. And we're, it took me a long time. It took me the whole three hours to be like, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it now. Now, now, now is the time I'm going to say it. <laughs> we're about 15 minutes outside of New York City, and I, I just gulped, and I said, guys, I have something I want to share with you. And I told everyone I was gay. And it was like, everyone thought it was the perfect capper. Everyone was like, thank you. They were like, that's awesome. This all meant so much to us that Kevin fucking came out of the closet to us. <laughs> and it was a real big deal. And when we got back, the other members of the state, everyone was like, hey, you did, Kevin came out of the closet. And so I had to come out to the other members of the closet and they were like, what's the big deal? 
And we were like, oh, well, it was very exciting yesterday because, <laughs> see, we did mushrooms and anyway. Uh, but it was a bonding experience for us. And I think we learned during that trip that um, one, if you, uh, if you go to the hockey stadium, just remember the people there are monsters. <laughs> and if you make plans with Michael Showalter, be sure to have a plan B. <laughs> All right, thank you very much.